Hello, everybody. In this video, we are going to learn all about shadows. Suppose you are creating a scene. This seems a bit weird. Is the ball floating on top of the plane, or is the ball in contact with the plane? Hmm. I see what's missing. Where are the shadows? Now it looks much clearer. The ball is in contact with the plane, and the light source is located in the top left corner. We can tell this information by looking at the shadow of the sphere. So how do we create shadows? One way of creating shadows is through ray tracing. Suppose you have a ray shooting from the main camera. The ray hits the surface at a point and bounces back. Can the light source directly reach this bounced off point, or is it going to be blocked by another object? You can connect the bounce off point and the light source and check if there's anything in between them. If there isn't a blocking object, then the light can hit can reach this point. Otherwise, the point is in the shadow. However, if you render the implementation of ray trace shadows exactly like this, there is going to be an issue. This picture seems a bit odd. What are those black lines on the surface of the plane? Let's sample a point on the plane and zoom in. As we zoom in, we see that the point is actually placed under the plane. Why does this happen? Rounding error. We cannot represent a point exactly within uh, the finite number of bits in the floating point arithmetic. This causes a lack of precision leading to the sample point being located a little bit above or below the surface. If it is above the surface, everything works fine. But if, if it is below the surface, the shadow ray will hit the surface before reaching the light source, which results in these black lines on the surface. So how do we resolve this? How about ignoring the surface? Hmm. It seems to be working in this case. But what if the sur surface is concave that actually projects a shadow onto itself. In this case, ignoring the surface will eliminate these self-projected shadows. That would not work. A simple way to do this is to add a bias. We ignore any hits that occur within a certain threshold away from the sample point. It might be tricky though to select the right value for our bias. If the bias is too small, we may end up with black regions on surfaces that should not have shadows. On the other hand, if the bias is too big, we may light up some areas that are supposed to be shadowed. We have to fine tune our bias to a suitable value. Voila! Now we have a correctly rendered scene. Now the shadow looks correct, but it requires ray tracing. What if we don't have ray tracing? How do we create shadows when we are rendering with rasterization, where one triangle is rendered at a time? This will require another technique, shadow mapping. Shadow mapping is a traditional approach to rendering shadows. The concept behind shadow mapping is simple. We display the world from the perspective of the light source. Everything we can see is lighted, while everything we can't must be in the shadow. We first render the scene from the perspective of the light source and generate a depth map. A depth map stores the depth of each point captured on the image. Now, as we render the scene from the view camera, for each point in the scene, we first compute the distance between the point and the light source. Then, we apply the projection matrix of the depth map to this point to find the corresponding point on the map. We compare the depth between the two points. If the point in the scene has a greater depth than the point in the map, then it is in the shadows, otherwise it is lighted. Similar to ray trace shadows, the depth we calculated may have inaccuracies due to floating point rounding errors. Again, to solve this problem, we are going to introduce a bias into our calculations. This will remove this aliasing problem. Besides biases, there are other issues we need to take care of like the resolution of the depth map. Every point in the scene that maps the same pixel in the depth map will receive the same depth. 
which may cause these jagged shadow edges. To fix this issue, we apply a filtering matrix to the view camera. This will soften the edges and give us a nice soft shadow like this. I hope you enjoy this cartoon on shadows.